Good morning, everyone. I had said I'd go through a few of the questions from the mixed exercise. I hope that you were able to have a go at it and that you were able to use the solution bank to help you. Um, here's one that we talked about, question 11, and I think you remember we'd got this far. Um, part A, we'd used the trick on the calculator. And part B, although the question doesn't ask us to solve this equation, I'd said I'm going to think about it as a solve question originally, and I'm going to get the calculator to tell me the two solutions. And they tell me here, but here they give it to me in a much more, a much easy way. And, and the, the trick was there that that told me that this bracket was 7x minus 8. And, and that's because for this bracket to be 0, 7x would have to be 8. So x is 8 divided by 7. And over here, hopefully you can see that's 5x plus 6, because 5x would have to be minus 6, and therefore x is minus 6 divided by 5. Now, I'm not going to grid it out and check, but if you do grid that out and check, you find that it does indeed give you um, this. So it does indeed work, uh, which is good news. So how do we then use that to solve the question? So the question uh, is not about when it equals zero. The question is about what this equals when x is 25, which is 21,877. So what we're saying is that this equals 21,877. And that means that this equals 21,000. 877. So I'm sort of crossing out the evidence that it was a solve question because it wasn't actually. I just used that as a tool. And now if I make x equal to 25, well, uh, 725s are 175. Take away 8, so that's uh, 167. And uh, 525s are 125, so that's 1, 3, 1. So that, those two are being multiplied, aren't they? So what we're saying is this. Now, okay, I'm, I'm nervously going to check that on my calculator just to make sure that I've done that right. So 167 times 131. Uh, sorry, 167 times 131. Phew. Yeah, I do get the right answer. And we're being asked to show that this can be written as a product of two prime factors? Well, I'm not going to check, but I'm assuming that both of these are prime numbers. And because this can be divided by both of those, they are also factors. So these two are prime factors. Therefore, we have answered the question. So I factorised it using a bit of a cheat. And then I just made x equal to 25. And that gave me those two answers. It's quite a clever question, quite a tricky question. Hopefully you can see how I've done it. OK, here is the second question I'd like to go through. If you remember, I didn't go through this question before. I went through a similar question. So um, here I've multiplied out the right hand side. I've gridded it out and it's a bit frustrating this one because of the, the missing value. So when I come to, to peanut, I can't combine those and those. So what I've done is these two I've written here. Those are my two x squared terms. And then these two I've written here. There are my they are my x terms. Um, so if I then look at the question, this, we're told, is equal to this. So I'm going to write that on the left hand side. So that's x cubed minus x squared minus 17x minus 15. And so now we can do that process called equating. And if you remember, I mentioned it in the last video, equating is saying that equal sign there means that this thing and this thing have got to be the same. And that means that the number of x cubed on both sides will be the same. The number of x squared will be the first side, same on both sides. Number of x's and the number, the constant, will be the same on both sides. Now, looking at the x cubes, well, that's obvious, isn't it? I've got one x cubed there and one x cubed there. So I don't need to look at any more detail at the x cubed. But let's look at the x squareds. And just so it's clear what I'm doing, I'm going to put in brackets but I'm now looking at the x squareds. On the left hand side, I've got minus 1 x squared. So I'm just writing the number I've got. I'm not writing minus 1 x squared. I'm just saying I've got minus 1 of them over here. 
on this side, how many x squareds have I got? Well, I've got 3x squared there and b x squared there. So look how I write that. So all I'm doing is writing the number of x squared on the left hand side and the right hand side. Now, I need to find the values of b and c and look what I can do. I can take 3 from both sides. So b is minus 4. Good news so far. Going to have to move down a bit. Um, so now let's look at the x's. On the left hand side I've got minus 17 x's. On the right hand side I've got 3b x's and I've got c x's. But I've just worked out that b is minus 4 so I can rewrite that as 3 lots of minus 4 be minus 12. And so I know that C, well to get rid of the minus 12 I've got to add 12, minus 17 add 12 is minus 5. And so I've got my values of B and C. Now I could have gone on to look at the constant term, minus 15 is equal to 3C, those two terms are the same, and that would have given me the same answer, so that would have perhaps been an easier way to work out that constant term. But I've now worked out what B and C were using equating, so I now need to use that to finish off the question. So if I go back to the original question, I now know that B is minus 4 and C is minus 5, so I can rewrite that here. Now the question says, hence, hence always mean to use your previous answer, well I've done that by replacing B with minus 4 and C with minus 5, hence fully factorise it. Well, if I write it out there, what they want me to do is to break that quadratic into two separate brackets, and that will be the end of the problem. The x minus 3 has been there, sorry, x plus 3 has been there all along. I just need to factorise that one. How good is your factorising? And that is the final answer to that question. OK, last question I want to go through is question 20. I don't know if it's one that you had a go at. I think it's a good example of a question that looks quite scary, but isn't actually as bad as it seems, particularly if you remember the basic principles that we learned at GCSE. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, looking at this equation, so it's an equation, I've got a fraction here. And for those who I taught, you know full well, I hate fractions. I get rid of them wherever I can. So. I can get rid of that fraction if I multiply it by root 3. If I multiply by root 3, I get um, just 8x kills the fraction. I'm not talking about rationalising it. I'm talking about where you multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. Here I'm just multiplying it by root 3. And that's fine. I can do that provided I also multiply this by root 3. And I also multiply that by root 3, and that gives me x times root 12 times root 3, and root 12 times root 3 is root 36. So I haven't rationalised, that's a different process. Here I've just used my balancing uh, techniques, my algebra equation techniques. I've multiplied everything by root 3, and I'm left with the square root of 36. I know the square root of 36, it's 6, so I get... And this looks nasty, but actually it's, it's a both sides equation. I've got my missing value on both sides, so I'm just going to take away x's from this side. So I'm going to take 6x's away from both sides. And um, they want me to solve it, they want me to know what x is. Well, if I know that 2x is 8 lots of root 3, then 1x will be 4 lots of root 3. They want the answer in the form a root b, where a and b are both whole numbers. Bingo! Full marks. Okay, so um, I hope you had a go at some of those questions in the mixed exercise. Remember, it deliberately gets hard. So, um, you know, if you found it hard, you were doing it right. I've attached to um, this email or this class chart, depending on how you're getting this, um, the um, assessment for the end of this chapter. And um, I'd like you to have a go at it. So this is Friday. I know Friday's a bank holiday. So I'm going to give you all of next week to have a go at that assessment. 
And at some point next week, I'd like you to um, submit it to me. So I'd like you to um, uh, email it to me, ideally email me, you know, a photo or a scan of it. Um, if not, you could post it to the school, but that just delays things. And if you do go the postal route, could you email me just to say that's what you've done? Um, so um, it's a non-calculator assessment. Um, and a lot of you will be saying, well, hang on a minute, how am I going to check whether or not you use a calculator? Well, to be frank, I hope you will use a calculator to check your answers. But what you need to do in your method is you need to convince me that you understand how you got the answer. So I need to see workings that would make it clear to me that you didn't actually need the calculator to work out the answer. Um, have a look. Don't be scared. And um, I, I'm hoping that you will find that if you've been through the videos that we work through, that you find you can score well on that assessment. So um, I'm giving you all of next week. I'm not going to post new videos next week. And at some point next week, I look forward to receiving your um, your answers to those questions. Thanks very much.